Hi, this is Mark Staples with Utah Avalanche Center. What I'm looking for today are layers within the recent storms that could break and make an avalanche. We've definitely seen some avalanches and the big take home is we get snow and we get wind. And when you get both of those, you tend to get avalanches. Now, some avalanches have been breaking down a few layers deep underneath some older storm snow. It's not a cause for major concern, Drew Hardesty has a great analogy in that as these layers stack up, we need to give the glue time to dry. Kind of like if you were building a model or something. And if you start to load it up too soon before that glue is dried, well then you get an avalanche. So we did have two weeks of somewhat dry weather and that, did, that, that has created maybe a softer layer in places that has created an avalanche. Uh, there have been some crust in other places, all of those things. Uh, you know, a key point about snow and avalanches is that when you load it up and you add all this weight, which adds stress, it will find the weakest layer. Doesn't have to be some layer of huge facets, but it'll find the softest, weakest layer and we'll make an avalanche on that. Moving forward, what I'm going to do is A, I'm going to avoid areas that are recently wind loaded and B, I'm going to dig down several feet through several layers of these storms and I'm gonna do some extended column test. I'll probably uh, check the storm snow, burp in the shovel, and see if there are any signs that the snow wants to break and produce an avalanche. If so, I'm just gonna go to slopes less than 30 degrees, wait and give time for the glue to dry.